So let's have a chat about mineral makeup. Now you might have tried it, you might have wondered about it, or you might be interested in trying it but not sure what to get or what to buy. So let's talk about mineral makeup. Okay, so in the last probably 15 years or so, then the mineral makeup has really taken off and it's become really popular, like the latest and greatest thing for a while there. And a lot of the big brands have jumped on the bandwagon. You'll find L'Oreal and Revlon and all the big brands have their own mineral makeup range and a lot of them will actually charge a lot for it. So let's talk about that. Now, what's different about mineral makeup? How is mineral makeup different to regular makeup? Well, mineral makeup is made up of mineral powders, oxides, micas and pigments and sometimes you get fillers in there as well. Now conventional makeup also contains these ingredients but the difference is it'll have more fillers, more liquids, more oils, more preservatives because once you've got once you add liquid to a product, so say you've got a liquid foundation it's very similar to a mineral foundation, which is, this is your mineral foundation and it's just in a powder form. Once you add liquid to that, you're also adding the possibility of bacteria getting in and of the product actually spoiling. So with, with no liquids, that's one thing about mineral makeup, with no liquid in there, it's actually going to last for years and years and years. It doesn't really go off. So once you add liquids, you also need to add preservatives. And this is one of the advantages of mineral makeup is that you're not getting those preservatives because a lot of the preservatives that are in makeup are considered to be really harmful. They can be irritants to your skin. Some people even believe cancer causing with certain um, chemical preservatives. So back to mineral makeup. Now, is mineral makeup completely natural? Mm -hmm. Actually, no. Uh, you know, think about it this way: the products, the the raw materials, may come naturally. So you've got your oxides and your micas and minerals that might be dug up, say, from a mine somewhere. And you know what happens with those? They might get mashed up, mixed together. And in the old days, in maybe Cleopatra's day, they would be mixed with a paste and or and applied straight away and used really raw. But what we get now what we actually get in our shops and in our salons and in our chemists and our supermarkets is not that raw material obviously so it's got things it's had it's been treated to make it safe for our skin because with uh the way things are today everything has to be safe everything has to be tested everything has to be consistent so you know it does it can't possibly have a hundred percent natural product straight from unless you're taking it straight from the ground yourself so yeah a so it's more about rather than what actually goes into the product it's more about what doesn't go into it so you know i've just spoken briefly about the preservatives and some of those preservatives are things like parabens methyl paraben ethyl paraben basically if you see on the label anything that says paraben is a paraben so and they are considered to be harmful there's also mineral oil that which is a byproduct of petroleum and by the way baby oil is pretty much pure mineral oil and it does really have no benefit to your baby and possibly harmful effects but i'm not going to go into that now but that's another blog post but um, it really just sits on the skin and it might feel nice and might feel soft, but baby oil really doesn't do anything for the skin. It, does, it doesn't even penetrate into the skin to make it, yeah, it doesn't really help. It doesn't really do anything for the skin to treat the skin. It feels like it does, but it's actually not. Um, yeah, and alcohol and artificial fragrances and all these things can be really irritating to the skin, especially if you've got sensitive skin. Even if you haven't got sensitive skin, it can have long-term effects. It can affect the um, it can affect the aging process, you know. So if you're wanting to keep things as natural as possible and fewer preservatives as possible, then mineral makeup is, you know, really your best bet. You know, you're knowing a bit more about what you're actually putting onto your skin. So it's also considered to be really good for 
acne skin, if you've got really oily skin, it's really, because it's it comes in the powder form, I've got one here, which I'll just open up. Hopefully you can see me here. Okay. So you've got it, it comes in a sifter jar. This is that this is a mineral foundation, and what you do is you open up the sifter and it's just a like a um in powder form. So okay, so that can be really good for helping to absorb excess oil and giving more of a matte finish rather than if you're using a liquid foundation, it might make you a bit shiny, you know, give you that as the oil comes through really quickly. You can even use, if you do like a liquid foundation, you can use a liquid foundation and sometimes if you like a really good coverage, a mineral layer over the top can be really helpful too. But um, yeah, the other thing about mineral makeup is it is it doesn't really clog the pores like traditional makeup does. So that can be really helpful too if you're prone to breakouts. Uh, now, what else was I going to say about, oh, the other thing is sun protections. A lot of people believe that mineral makeup contains sunscreen and it does contain the, uh, the most mineral makeups contain titanium dioxide and also zinc and they are common ingredients in sunscreen. So I wouldn't say that you should stop wearing sunscreen if you're wearing mineral makeup, but it just gives you that bit of extra protection because you can't tell the percentage of, you know, it doesn't give you an SPF really. So you, yeah, don't, I wouldn't stop wearing your sunscreen or your sunscreen moisturizer, but definitely gives you some sun protection and usually fairly water resistant as well. So it's great for swimming, great for summer. Uh, yeah, so, and yeah, it lasts pretty well on the skin. I always say, especially for mineral makeup, to use a kabuki brush. Use a kabuki brush for mineral makeup, okay? You, because what you're doing with mineral makeup, you're not just putting it on the skin like you would with translucent powder where you just brush it on and brush downwards. You actually want to blend it in with the natural oils in your skin, so you're buffing it into the skin. So you get that coverage and you get that long-lasting effect. So definitely always use a kabuki brush. That's really important. That's with the foundation. Um, Yeah, and with the foundation, obviously you can build it up as you go. You can you can build it up as you go. You can create layers and you can start off with a light layer. And then if you want more coverage, you can add more coverage. So during the day, you might just do a quick, quick light coverage. And then at nighttime, if you're going out, you might put a bit more color in there, you know, depending on the lighting of where you're going, of course. So, you know, but look, with any makeup overall, I, I really do recommend mineral makeup. I do enjoy dabbling with mineral makeup. I've played with um, creating my own mineral makeup before, and that's a bit of a fun hobby as well. But yeah, any the mineral makeup that you buy that has no uh, liquid in it is always pretty good. And yeah, look, this is the eyeshadow this is color me beautiful in chocolate ice i think it is that's a mineral eyeshadow you can see that's got the sifter holes as well so you just pour a little bit into your lid and you can just use a normal eyeshadow brush with the mineral eyeshadow i always use a brush not a sponge and that gives a pretty good coverage you can also use most mineral eyeshadows you can use wet and if you want a bit more vibrant color really deep color then you just wet your brush Pop that in the lid so you don't dip the brush into the product itself. You just pop a little bit of product in the lid, dip your brush in it, and you can apply it wet like that. And that can also help it to last longer as well. So uh, hopefully that's been helpful and answered some of your questions about mineral makeup. If you've got any more questions, please get in touch. I'm happy to answer any questions you've got either through the Facebook page or through my website, www dot cmbaustralia.com.au and just one more thing remember whatever product you're using always check your ingredients label always have a look at what's on there get to know what is in there and if you're finding you're getting irritated by several products have a look and see if there's a common ingredient in there try eliminating that ingredient using products that don't contain it and see if you notice a difference because there's a lot of irritation and 
obviously if you do experience irritation with any products just please stop using it and try and work out what that ingredient is and eliminate it anyway i'm julie from color me beautiful australia hope you're having a great day i'll see you in the next video bye